everyone, this is Shadow the Rat, and in this video I wanted to do a compilation of some of the behaviors or some of the things that happen to rats that can often seem dangerous or off-putting to new owners that are actually just perfectly fine and not really harmful to the rats after all. So first of all, I want to start with brooksing, and brooksing is just the term we use for when the rats grind their teeth back and forth together. Now they actually have to do this because their incisors are going to grow for their entire life and because of this they need to grind them together otherwise their teeth will actually grow into their mouth so you know that's obviously not something you want to happen now unless your rats have misaligned teeth meaning that their incisors don't match up properly they actually don't need to chew any chew toys or anything hard at all in fact because they will brooks to grind their teeth down and that will keep everything trim if your rats have misaligned teeth on the other hand no amount of chew toys is going to get them back to normal and you will need a vet to show you how to clip or to file down the teeth just because the rats won't be able to eat if their incisors get to a certain length so yeah, brooksing is very important to the rats and we often also associate it with the rat either being happy or concerned or scared or whatever. And it is often seen with these more extreme emotions. So for example, if you're petting your rat and they brooks, then it's often a sign that they are just very happy and it's kind of like a cat's purr. So if your rats are brooksing hard enough, you're going to see what is known as boggling. And boggling is when the rat's eyes go in and out. And this occurs because the jaw muscle is connected to the eyes. And so if you see your rat's eyes popping in and out, just know that it's not a bad sign. In fact, it usually means that the rat is really happy because they have to be brooksing really hard for this to occur. Again, like a cat's purr, you can also see it when the rat is feeling ill or when they're feeling nervous or something else. But I do find that boggling tends to usually just occur when the rats are more happy than when they're scared. So the next thing I want to talk about is called pooling, or at least that's what I call it because I haven't seen anyone else give it a terminology. It's basically when the rat takes their mouth and they gently bite down and tug on another rat, or in some cases they might even do it to you and your fingers. And this is not any sort of aggression, it also doesn't seem to be any sort of grooming. It just seems to be, and again this is just how I interpret this, but it seems to be a misplaced maternal instinct almost. like. The only times I've actually seen this occur have been outside of either the cage, like the rat is inside the cage and another rat or you are right outside the cage and the rat is trying to pull you inside, or if the rat is outside a hut and another one is inside a hut and the one inside the hut tries to pull the outside one in. And these are why I think it seems like a more maternal behavior. However, it's also seen in males, so who knows really. In any case, I don't think it's an aggressive behavior at all. I always find it to be a very gentle behavior. Just the rats trying to pull each other places or trying to pull you places. And as long as you aren't being hurt and as long as the other rats aren't being hurt, I wouldn't be concerned about seeing this behavior. So the next thing I want to go over is nibbling. And this is something that sometimes new owners will be concerned about because the rats will come and nibble them. And oftentimes you get the question of, will this develop into a full on biting later on? And the good news is that no, it won't. Just like other baby animals, rats tend to explore the world with their mouth. But the thing is that adult rats who haven't had much socialization either will also perform this behavior. And it's nothing to be concerned about because nibbling actually often turns into grooming later on as opposed to any sort of biting. If it gets too hard, you can just make a loud noise and then gently push the rat away and they will quickly get the message that they're just being a little too rough. So the next thing I want to talk about is hiccups. Now hiccups can be one of the scarier things to see with your rats because you're going to see the rat jerk back and forth rhythmatically and some people will mistake this for a seizure the first time they see it but it's not a seizure and one of the main differences and how you can really tell is that a rat who's hiccuping will be very responsive. If you show them a piece of food, they'll take it, they'll eat it. Now I'm not exactly sure why rats hiccup, presumably it's because the same reason we do. However, it does seem to happen most often when they are waking up or getting up from a spot where they're sitting still. And so I'd guess that it has something to do with the change in breathing as you go from a resting state to a more moving about state. However, in any case, you really don't need to worry about hiccups. They do not indicate any sort of respiratory problems. All of my rats tend to have hiccups at some point in their life. As I said, again, often when they wake up. Now hiccups can actually be either silent or the rats can make a small squeak as they do them. And both of these are again, perfectly fine. There's no issue if your rats are making a small squeak as they hiccup. I've heard people say this is linked to a respiratory problem, but this has not been my experience. In a second, I'm going to stop talking and you're going to see that Cookie is actually making a pretty noticeable squeak as she hiccups in this clip and she was perfectly fine just a few minutes later. So 
the next thing we're going to talk about is porphyrin. So porphyrin is just the red rat mucus that all rats have. All rats secrete it just like all humans secrete their own mucus, which is kind of gross when I say it like that. Anyway, most rats will groom it off before you see it, which is why oftentimes with younger rats, you're never going to see porphyrin until they get older or in some cases until they get stressed or sick because all of these things, getting older, getting stressed, getting sick, are going to lead to the rat grooming less or even to them producing more porphyrin. However, that does not mean that any porphyrin is going to be a bad sign and a sign that you immediately need to take your rat to the vet because in my experience, porphyrin by itself is usually not a sign of anything but the fact that the rat hasn't groomed it off yet and usually this is because they haven't had a chance to. Now, I do find that older rats also tend to have more porphyrin even when perfectly healthy. I had a clip up on screen of my rat Blackberry who is now over two and she's had some porphyrin on her nose on and off for quite a while now and she is perfectly healthy and I've even had younger rats who are perfectly healthy like my Sonic just have porphyrin all the time so it just differs by the individual just like in humans. So the next thing I want to talk about are the behaviors of females in heat. So these can be often really strange and you will see your rat for example arching their back or wiggling their ears or running away from the other rats but in a very strange fashion almost as if they're asking them to chase them which is exactly what they're doing and then the other rats will often try to hump them and you'll often see a little bit more skittishness in the rat who's in heat and this happens every four to five days after the rat turns five weeks old which is when they first begin to go into heat and this will happen just for a few hours on that day when the rat goes into heat. So yeah, if you have a intact female, then expect to see some of these behaviors and don't be surprised when they happen. But then again, some rats do show no behaviors when in heat, so it can go either way. So the next thing I want to talk about is rough play or squeaking while playing. And I just want to say that it's perfectly normal for bonded rats to wrestle and squeak and do all sorts of behaviors like that. These are just ways for them to, you know, maintain a bond, maintain a certain sort of relationship. Often we also think it's related to hierarchy, but no matter what, these behaviors are not dangerous. It's normal for rats to wrestle, push each other over, play bite, all sorts of stuff. As long as you're not seeing the rats draw blood and as long as one rat doesn't seem to be terrified of the other rats, then everything is probably good. Oftentimes you will hear them scream like they're murdering each other, but no, it's just them being crazy little things. Then you walk over to the cage and you just have a bunch of little innocent noses sticking up and looking at you like, what are you doing? You're disrupting our fun. So yeah, this is just not something you really need to worry about unless you're seeing obvious signs of issues. You will know if something is wrong just by the way that they act. The behaviors will look a lot different when they're being serious and actually trying to hurt each other, but the majority of rats aren't going to fight like this. They're just going to stick to mock fighting and that's perfectly normal and something you should just let them do. So the next thing I want to talk about is the rat's teeth and particularly how the rats can actually split their bottom teeth and put them into a V shape. And then the other thing here is that when rats are relaxed, you're often going to see that their bottom lower jaw skin is going to be hanging down just loose from their bottom teeth. And this again is not something to worry about. This is just how rats are when they're relaxed. And I have a very funny clip of Latte just sitting there in this position right now. I always think their faces look absolutely hilarious when they do this. So the final thing I wanna talk about is the most serious thing on this list, and that is choking. So choking in rats is usually totally benign, and by that I mean that because of the way their airways are designed, it's very rare for them to truly choke and not be able to breathe. So usually when they choke, it's not a big deal. The rats will do this bobbing head motion for a few minutes to help them get rid of the offending object. Just remember rats can't gag, they also can't vomit, and this is because they lack the muscles for it. So instead of that, they will do this bobbing head motion to help move the item along. If you think your rat is vomiting, usually what it actually is is passive regurgitation, meaning that the item got stuck in the esophagus and instead of going down, it just passively flowed out. This is not true vomiting, but it is a way for the rat to get rid of the offending obstruction. Now, sometimes rats will be choking for quite a while, like two, three hours or even longer. So yeah, usually rats get it out by themselves and if they're breathing, you really shouldn't do anything about it. However, if their tail or extremities start to turn blue or if they seem to have trouble breathing, then it's a good idea to go immediately to the vet. If they stop breathing entirely, then you can do this thing known as the rat fling, which is when you hold the rat by the neck and the base of the tail, and then you take your hands and you move them in an arc downwards using gravity to help get the item out. However, you should only do this if your rat isn't breathing, and I've never encountered any situation where this actually happened. So yeah, this is something that looks really scary, but it's often nothing really to worry about as they will get the offending item out by themselves, and then they will be perfectly fine. 
Okay, so that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully this video was helpful to anyone out there who is experiencing any of these new things with their rats for the first time. I know a lot of these things can be a little weird, especially if you've never had rodents before. But yeah, I just hope this video helps anyone out there who is a little bit concerned about their rat and seeing some behaviors or things like I showed in this video. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time. Bye!